Last week, I managed to go hands-on with Shadow of War and take on an entire fortress assault with my own army. I wasn't able to capture my own footage, but with the help of some new gameplay provided by Warner Brothers, I thought I'd share exactly how an assault goes down from planning to aftermath. Here are the six stages of Shadow of War's fortress assaults. The world of Shadow of War is, in developer Monolith's words, up to four times bigger than that of its predecessor, Shadow of Mordor. There are different kinds of landscapes to explore and traverse, and there's a lot more depth to what you can do in the world. In the lead-up to an assault, you can do a little digging in the region around the fortress to learn more about the identity of its ruler and his minions. This had already been done in our demo, so we could go straight to the assault start point to check out the fortress hierarchy and see all of its warlord's strength and weaknesses for ourselves. Before heading to the planning stage of a fortress assault, you can also plant your own spies to keep a close watch on your target. These spies will then switch sides and fight for you once the battle properly starts. When you feel ready to take on a fortress, you'll need to go to a specific start point where you can start planning your approach. If you've done your research, this screen will also show you vital information on each warlord's strengths and weaknesses and this should directly influence what bonuses you take into the fight. Tribal affinities of certain warlords lend fortresses specific features, like stone walls, iron gates, and armor types, which means that you should plan accordingly for each encounter. Your own warlords can offer you similar bonuses, like Karagor mounts, breaching sappers, siege beasts, giant spiders, and even a drake. Although it's important to remember that drakes attack indiscriminately at first, and must be attacked and broken before you can ride them. When you do though, it goes without saying that they easily provide enough firepower to turn the tide of a battle. Anyway, during my own playthrough, I found that a few rival warlords were both immune to arrows and scared of Karagors, so I decided I decided that bringing my own Karagor mounts and focusing on melee attacks was the way to go. A few of them, including the main warlord target, were also afraid of fire, which Celebrimbor's wraith powers can help with. You can also assign a warlord as your own personal bodyguard, which I did because the final target was a pretty big guy. Some wage war for glory, others for honor. We wage war. When you're ready to begin the attack and press forward to start the assault, you'll get a cutscene where the warlord will swagger out onto a balcony and proceed to give you a little smack talk. What are we waiting for? Let's show these globs we mean business! Your allies will then come together to say something in response, a nice touch that will no doubt help to make you like them that little bit more. Once the battle begins, you have options as to how to proceed. You can head straight for the first of three capture points, where you can quickly claim ground and where you're more likely to come face to face with enemy captains, or you can try taking down archers and siege beasts to make it less likely that your own captains will fall in battle. Monolith told us that this particular assault was taking place on a save that was roughly three quarters of the way through the game. So most of our wraith powers were unlocked, which meant that we were very mobile, using elven shots to teleport from archer to archer for quick executions, and vaulting over melee attackers and using Celebrimbor's new polearm style weapon for a bit of crowd control. Combat overall is similar to Shadow of Mordor, satisfying, free-flowing and versatile. The great thing about putting some planning into your assault is that opportunities will present themselves naturally over the course of the battle, and in a cool new twist on the Nemesis system, your allies can be downed and bleeding out during a battle, and you have a limited window where you can swoop in and save them. Doing this means they're more likely to save you when the chance comes along, but if you don't, you're running the risk of captains turning on you later on down the line. Of course, you can always replace them with other orcs you manage to dominate over the course of an assault. Dominating only works if an orc is the same level as you or lower, so if they are in fact more powerful, shaming them will lower their level and make them easier to overpower the next time you meet. Failing that, you can always kill them. Despite all the careful planning, it's very easy to get a little bit carried away with the combat and bite off more than you can chew. If you do die during an assault, your progress will carry over to your next attempt. So if you defeated any enemy captains, certain fortress perks will be gone. Amazingly, I was killed by one captain in particular and came back ready to exact revenge. But upon starting the assault again, the warlord brought that very same captain out in front of my army during the initial cutscene. 
claiming he had found a spy. He wasn't, of course, but the warlord murdered his own man before the battle had even begun, severely weakening his own position. The monolith developer guiding me through the experience said they'd never seen that happen before. It was an amazing moment, although I was slightly miffed that I was denied killing him myself. Climbing up to that same balcony later in the battle, however, I was able to pick up the loot that the captain dropped when he died. I was just thinking to myself, it's been a long time since I've disemboweled a ranger, and now here you are. It's fate! Once you've captured all points, which should in theory be easier on repeated attempts so long as you haven't lost too many of your own allies, you can make your way towards your main target stronghold, which is separated from the rest of the map. Your army won't be able to follow you there, but your bodyguard, if you appointed one, will be able to be summoned to your side, as well as your mount. The target won't be alone either, so I guess this is only fair. The final showdown can be very easy or very difficult, depending on how lucky you are with your target's strengths and weaknesses. Mine was very easy as the warlord was spooked by fire and so all I had to do was trigger an AoE blast and he was running scared, leaving me plenty of time to zip around and pick off the archers overlooking the arena. Of course, while I was doing that, my bodyguard went in and stole my kill, so I was denied a finishing blow not once but twice during that entire battle. But a win's a win, I guess. <laughs> Go ahead, take my fort. It won't be any good without your innards decorating it anyway. When you defeat the warlord, you'll get a victory cutscene. Mine had Talion coming out and brandishing a decapitated head at a very appreciative army. Then, you'll need to put your own warlord in place to ensure that rival factions don't swoop in and steal the fortress back from you later on. I appointed my bodyguard as the new warlord, which meant a couple of other captain promotions within the lower ranks. Doing this is crucial, Monolith says, as not promoting your right-hand men can actually sow dissent among them, which could lead to insurgencies later on. After that comes the fun part, checking out your loot. You might have picked up some from the captains you killed in battle. I was able to snag a rare cloak as well as a legendary sword, and these items actually carry the names of the enemies you vanquished. The loot system is surprisingly deep, with tribes offering basic or advanced set bonuses and challenge unlocks. For example, four stealth kills with my sword would unlock its first tier passive skill. It's an interesting extra layer of strategy that elevates Shadow of War from an action game to something that feels a lot more like an RPG. And that was pretty much it for our 20 minute demo. Fortress assaults are involved and ultimately very satisfying to pull off, building on what's come before in Shadow of Mordor to make what feels like your very own mini Helm's Deep. We'll be talking about Shadow of War a lot more in the lead up to launch, so be sure to like and subscribe to Eurogamer for more. Thanks for watching. Bye!